All right, last but not least, entry three. You already by now have probably figured out that there's a pattern with each one of these. In this case, I've actually put both kinds of sources, APA and MLA, and I'll explain that in a minute. But again, I have the summary, I have the quotes, and I have my own kind of take on each of those things. Um, what, the reason why I wanted to show you this source is because it's actually a video, and some people don't think that you can use videos or YouTube clips or images as part of your sources for a paper, and you absolutely can. Um, so I have it in as an APA source and an MLA source, and I just want to show you a little bit of where I got the information so I could cite these. First of all, I'm going to go to the actual talk itself. Here we are at the TED website. Here's the actual uh, video. One thing I want to point out, let me stop this for just a second, is that there's this wonderful thing here called show transcript. It's really hard to pull quotes just from an audio recording. You're just trying to listen and then madly type it on your type it on your computer by yourself. You don't have to do that with TED Talks because they have already had somebody type it for you. So if I click on show transcript, I'm going to go ahead and put it in English because uh, my Arabic's a little bit rusty. But we're going to go down here and it has a whole transcript of the talk. You can see my name is Dan Cohen and I'm an academic, as he said. So it just goes into his whole talk and we can actually scroll down and see that whole thing, which is great because then you can pull direct quotes and quote the author with confidence. Um, also over here in this section you'll see that it has information about Daniel Cohen. There's a section right here that says full bio. So if we want to get more information about him, where he's from, where this talk was done, oh, Waterville, Maine, Colby College, we can get it from there. We'll need that information because um, if I didn't know how to cite a video, which actually I didn't, I need to go to Google and look up the Owl Purdue. Here we are. Yep, the Owl Purdue. This is, the OWL just stands for Online Writing Lab, and we love the Online Writing Lab. Notice that they have a whole section on MLA and APA. So if I wanted to figure out how to cite this in APA, I would just go to this section, and I have the APA style and formatting guide, and I've got to figure out, okay, how am I going to cite this? So I look down, and I'm like, okay, it's not a book. It's not any kind of print source. Ah, it's an electronic source. So let me check this out. I'm going to look over here on the electronic sources and publications page. Uh, let's see, it's not an online periodical. This section is just about DOIs. This is a, another way of finding things other than using the URL, which you might use for print resources. Um, let's see, it's not an article from a database. It's not an abstract. It's not a newspaper article. It's not an electronic book. It's not a Kindle book. It's not a chapter section, it's not a book review, it's not any of these, it's not graphic data, it's not really an online interview. Ah, an online lecture notes and presentation slides. Now I'm getting closer because this is an online lecture. Um, a non periodical web document or report, computer software, download software, and email, other forum or discussion board posting video blog post. You can see there's not really an actual, you know, it has video podcast, but it doesn't have anything like a video. It doesn't ever say like TED Talk on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the thing that I think is pretty much closest to it. Um, it's kind of like a video blog post. Um, so here I have this information. I know I'm going to need the author. I'm going to need the date. I'm going to need the title. That's easy enough. I'm going to need the URL. I can grab that. But I, I do want to show the information that it's an actual TED Talk. So actually, you know, I think I'm going to use this online lecture notes and presentation slides. Even though this isn't actually notes, um, I can put in here the author and what they're presenting, because it's like a, an online lecture, basically. And I can leave out the section that says retrieved from lecture notes online, and instead I can just say, okay, um, here's my URL retrieved from this. And so if I go back to um, my original example here in entry three, I put um, Daniel Cohen 2013 for argument's sake retrieved from and I just have the link. That's about as close as I can get. 
Um, later on, if I uh, was really going to use this in my paper, I'd probably go ahead and check this with a librarian and just say, you know, am I getting this right? I could also check it with the Writing Center, make sure I have it exactly right, but that's about as close as I can get for now. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. I don't expect you to necessarily make every single source, track every single exact source citation down, but do the best you can to get the information, basically so that you can find the source again, and so that if you want to use it in your final paper, you have the bulk of the information to use later. Of course, I can do the same thing with MLA. Um, just go to the Al Purdue again, instead of APA, and go back here to the top. Um, I can go back to Research and Citation and hit MLA style instead, and do the Formatting Install Guide, and now I can find similar information for um, electronic sources in MLA. And I already did that for this source, and as you can see, it's a little bit different. With MLA, they're not so much into including the URL as they are in APA. They mostly just want the information of where it took place, when it took place, and having all that sort of information in there. Um, so that, that, again, gives you some ideas of if you're not sure of a source, if it's like a video or something that's not as common or as well known, uh, for how to cite it, that's the source you want to go to, the Owl Purdue. And please feel free to use um, video and images and all these different kind of sources in your paper. Even personal interviews are okay. If you have somebody in your family or somebody you know who's an expert in an area that applies to your paper, interviews are a great source for your paper. So hopefully that just gives you an idea of how to do this beginning part if you're not sure if it's not a really standard source. Again, if you have more questions, there's lots of resources. You can ask me, you can ask the Writing Center, you can ask a librarian. We're all available in here to help. All right, thanks.